Still no sound. That is crazy. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get this happening. Should have sound now. Uh, should be all okay. Let me know if that's coming through okay. Now I have to go back to the other, to the other camera. Um, I'm just going to, for some weird reason, uh, the other camera is not giving me sound where it says that it actually is. Um, so anyway, we will just go with the, the old the old way uh, through there, and I'm pretty sure when I go to this to this other camera, uh, it removes the sound. So what? If we got sound, if we got sound now, uh, this is what I want to know. It's the right camera. Okay, we'll keep. We'll just keep rolling on. Uh, it, sh it tells me that it was working on the other end, but um, anyway, we'll just keep rolling on, and we'll go with it. So, Willem van Cotten is the man and bought bottle gardening to the internet right and that was a bit over a decade now maybe 12 13 years ago via facebook and facebook when facebook was very new you could have a very large reach and could reach a lot of people and he had millions he's one of the first people i knew to have like over a million subscribers on his uh, facebook page and he used to share a lot of my content because i did a lot of small space gardening and stuff like this in those days as well and uh, he's a really lovely man. And he took bottle gardening down to, uh, to Africa, right? To um, where there was a lot of, you know, like he's in Europe and closer to Africa. So they started composting down there using the bottles and things to grow uh, amazing plants. And uh, as far as I know, he wasn't worm farming uh, in those days, but they were composting and then they would make other inputs and things to add to the compost, uh, you know, as a li as liquid fertilizer, such as weed solutions and, and things like that. And as you can see there in that image, uh, what a great shot. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, the screen that we're sharing here and we'll scroll through and have a look. Now, keep in mind, we do need to use uh, food grade bottles for doing this and we do need to replace them regularly. So by Every season, they're going a bit blue-green, algae-ish on the outside. Throw them out, replace them, and use them, uh, and you know, get rid of them uh, accordingly. But you can use a lot of space, and there's lots of different ways that you can actually grow these plants, uh, like vertically, uh, horizontally, flat. And as you can see on this one, it's a vertical A-frame stand. And underneath, you can't see, but in the other photo I put out yesterday, uh, you can see there's a pond underneath there, so that all drips through and goes into the pond and they get the water out of that and then go around and walk around it and water the rest of the garden. Now this garden uh, is in uh, the Philippines. And so what we'll do now is I'll go across to this page and we will look at scrolling it through. There's the full image there. It'll pull me down to the side and it should give us uh, a pretty good rundown of where we are. So I just need to um, just have a, bit of, a little bit of patience with me why I go back to the top of this image here and share the story. So this guy's named Jojo Rom uh, from the Philippines and that's his garden there. And yeah, he's growing some lettuce there and you can see all the holes in the bottom, lots of big holes for drainage. We'll scroll down through. He's using one of those hot iron tools to, um, yeah, to sort of pierce the holes uh, in them and uh, they, they work really well. And I'm pretty sure this guy actually has his own YouTube channel now, which is pretty popular, but I can't uh, guarantee that. But there is someone online uh, on YouTube that's doing all this stuff. And he, I think he's got close to a million subscribers again uh, as well. And so anyway, what we've got here is the, a picture that I showed in the video last night, and that shows sort of a whole overall aspect of the garden. Now here's another uh, side on view of this stand here and it has the uh, this is before the pond was built i'd say underneath to catch all that water that flows through they're very careful with what they want to recycle even though they get a high rainfall in the philippines and you can see now uh the garden's grown and you know he's got garlic chives in there lettuce things like that and some tomatoes down the bottom now some of the water does trickle down to the other other pots but not so much because it's sitting on a v so what we want to do is introduce uh introduce 
our worm castings and worm juice and things like that to our leafy greens as a nitrogen mostly and then later on back off of our worm juice if we're doing tomatoes and things to stop a lot of leafy growth and uh, maybe change you know at work into a more different pk type of uh, fertilizer which you've seen back in another couple of videos back where i've shown you the different ones that you could use uh that they, they come in like a sort of like a powdered form sort of thing you know and you can also get other different types of liquid ones on the store shelves now um, without getting into hydroponics but if you look at hydroponics they use two parts so you can buy like at the leafy green part and then you can buy the flowering part and um, you sort of think of it like that where you're changing over and going into uh, the flowering part and again i want to thank you for uh bearing with me uh with the audio issues there we, we are getting there just got to run some more trials i was running i'm trying to run three different cameras and uh and that camera was playing up with the audio all right so there's some more lettuce growing out of the bottles there nice big bottles as you can see they're like the two liters and up i would say and um he's uh able to harvest a lot of food out of here and to be honest it, he could sort of i uh, set up a micro farm and be supplying uh say other families even selling some to uh to little restaurants and things like that you know he's got some bok choy growing in the back here that's some kang kong i can see which i grow as well and then i think there's some different lettuces here and then some t sweet uh, some italian sweet basil right in the front going to flower you can tell it with the um the white flowers there and so as we go through his garden you can see his wife here's picked a couple of cucumbers so how cool is that? So that, you know, at the beginning of the cucumber, as I said, you'd be getting it the worm juice, a nitrogen style of worm juice, and then you would be backing off and giving it something else. So, you know, it could even be like a weed tea mix or things like that. You just gotta be careful. It's a bit harder making the other ones, but generally in the compost, if you're getting a good compost, it'll have all that, the other, so the full MPK system in there and uh, the flowers and the fruit will get uh, what it needs, what it needs for that. And so we'll keep moving through. And if anyone wants to share any of uh, the other side of things, the PK side of things uh, in the chat uh, that we could use in liquid forms, that would be really good. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. Uh, you know, I've seen like uh, banana peel ones done, uh, different rice ones done, uh, all different types of things uh, to get them going. You see the garden and he's got some like uh, recycled boxes down here with tomatoes in them. There's also like these um, these rice hole bags. So the bags come in rice. And he's got lemongrass growing out of the top there. Uh, so I'll just scroll down a bit and make sure you can see this properly. Um, yeah, so there's some lemongrass growing in there uh, as well out of a rice hole bag. And uh, another friend of mine, I just can't think of his name right now, but he passed away a while ago and um, he invented the grow bag to bring it out online. And he started off with growing, believe it or not, in those woolies, in the shopping bags, the plasticky ones that drain through. And then he got the idea. And that was about maybe nine years ago or something now. And he invented the grow bag. Uh, lovely guy. And so you can use those those bags like that, those plastic rice hole bags. Get one or two gross out of them and then uh, move them on. All right. So hopefully uh, you're seeing this all okay. We'll keep scrolling through uh, this website here. And as I said, there's a link uh, down below that you can have a better look at the certification website to get more ideas. And we'll keep rolling forward, my friends. And there's, that must be his daughter there with more plants in the background. So you can grow tons of different types of plants. Some more tomatoes there. And I'd recommend if you're going to tomatoes, do the indeterminate uh, varieties. Um, so we'll talk about that for a minute. Uh, we'll get back on here and we'll pull me up side by side. So the indeterminate varieties are, um, I mean, determinate varieties. So they grow, uh, they have a shorter lifespan. They just grow, produce a whole lot of fruit and then die off. And they grow better in pots and things like that. The indeterminates will grow right through the season until they basically it gets colder, they exhaust themselves. And they generally can grow anywhere from sort of um six to twelve months depending on where you live in the season and the variety of plant but the determinate ones uh in the cherry tomatoes are great and you can get a whole lot of fruit but you just plant in succession so every six weeks 
um, you're putting new plants in. And you can save your seed each time and produce a, a, another crop, another crop, another crop. I'm throwing, I just throw my seed out to my chickens where I want them where they're playing around at the time. They run around with it and fight over the, and they drop seed around stuff and then they get in there and scratch it around in the mulch and I get tomatoes come up uh, and I've got to just go out and stake them up. <laughs> That's a bit of a lazy permaculture way to do it. But anyway, like I said, if um, people uh, want to share a, a PK version, so we've got our nitrogen version from our worm juice, let's just say, and then we're looking at, uh, you know, the, the other side of the PK sort of thing. So let me know what you think uh, about that. And if you've been bottle gardening, if you ever tried it before, if you've got any questions about it, and uh, yeah, and go from there. And remember, you can stack them. There are other ways where you can stack them on top of each other. Each one locks in each one, and there's a wick, or it drips down through the lid. And that's what I used to build. Um, if you go right back on Marty's garden and look bottle garden, I'm pretty sure it'll come up. So let's scroll right at the top of the comments where it says, I can't hear you and um, no sound, but we got onto it real quick. So um, yeah, hopefully it didn't mess up the show, but we just got to keep rolling now. I can't just keep going backwards and forwards. I'm learning as I go, right? Because uh, how do you say it? Um, yeah, I'm learning as I go because I spoke with Deborah B on the phone and she uh, is the moderator here. And she mentioned something really nice. She said, yeah, it's, it's really good that uh, you're getting the dailies at the moment. People would come together. It brings people together as a community. And also um, we get to learn that we all make mistakes and we all fumble through and that we all deal with technology in different ways and things like that. So again, appreciate uh, your patience uh, with this. And here we go. We're going to move through. G'day, AJ. How you going, mate? Be good to get you back on the show again soon if you're up for it. Uh, be nice to see you. And um, everyone's saying here, now they can hear me. You've got this. Hello, everyone. All good. And stopping by <laughs> while well, preparing dinner. Well, good to see you here, mate. And Rick said, yeah, we're back. And uh, yes, we are. And... Um, I'm trialing a couple of different cameras at the moment. So if we got this one here, it'll pull the three up. And uh, you should be able to still hear me now. So uh, if you let me know if you can, if I pulled the other camera across, uh, if you can still hear me, that would be really cool uh, to know. Uh, and I'll get rid of that just in case you didn't. <laughs> we'll keep moving forward. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, it, as I'm going along each day, I'm slowly getting better at what I do. And uh, the other camera has a much better image than this one. It's a better lens, uh, much better setup, and uh, we'll be able to get a nicer picture once I get that audio uh, sorted. I might need to get in touch with support here and keep going on. And yep, we just keep soldiering on. So yeah, this is it. Like, so a part A and a part B fertilizer. So part A is your nitrogen, and the other one's your root and flower set. And, you know, you want to get something that's highly mineralized as well. And that's why I always recommend, um, you know, seaweed, because seaweed has a lot of really good minerals in it from the ocean that have washed out from the earth. And, um, yeah, you can get those into the garden as well. And the thing about, like, so we go back to here, and uh, if we go scroll back to the garden again, we'll go back to, up to one of the images here where we can see a, a better look at the garden. Um, you know, you can see here that in a small space, you can grow quite a lot of food and that, you know, if you get your compost right, you won't have a big of an issue with the PK side of things, but you may want to look at other things. So your part B uh, being more of a flower one to actually help uh, with the onset of the fruits and things like that but you know um, it's not you don't have to do that like these guys are just growing straight in compost right uh, they're hardly getting any amendments in I know in um, in the Philippines I've seen them do it firsthand um, when they're cooking their rice they actually use the they save that water that they soak and clean and wash the rice in and then pour it back onto the plants. That has lots of minerals and things. Whenever they're washing stuff and mincing stuff and all that type, that green juices and everything like that, they're putting it back uh, onto their plants. They're crushing up the eggshell uh, as well and using that as a calcium base for the uh, things like tomatoes and stuff like that. So uh, 
they are recycling everything. And as I said, uh, I've seen it myself. I went there, uh, it was back with car and it was probably seven years ago now, looking around at some land to start a, a farm there and an educational system. Um, it, it just, it didn't work out. You know, I wasn't supposed to be there, but I still kept on working on that. So the, the composting system that I made at home uh, it's all done by hand with the worm farming and everything like that is really an extension of this. I never really mentioned that much, but uh, it was to take that model uh, so we could systemize that better and then take that into Southeast Asia, places like the Philippines and create these micro farms where they can produce food for themselves and create an income because I put together the whole system. I developed it all down at, at North Haven where I was. So we're composting, worm farming and growing and using the inputs. And they drink a lot of coffee guys there like everyone else. So lots of coffee grounds, lots of stuff, uh, lots of stuff being not being wasted, but lots of stuff to access to compost. And look, they have a bigger why than us. And you say, what do you mean by why? Well, their why factories, why do they do it? Because they don't have the income and the infrastructure and to do these type of things. And now we're for, you know, like with inflation coming upon us and I know I haven't uh, had it, I am working at school, so I, I don't get an, my part of my income for about a month. And my garden has been saving me big time. This morning, I just had some sourdough toast. Um, I made some pesto yesterday from stuff from the garden, put that down in the garden I, and I had cucumbers and tomatoes on my toast this morning. It cost me hardly anything. And I'm not lying, guys, just to say, to make this true. This is the honest to God truth. Um, my garden is saving me at the moment um, until uh, we, I go into off study, I'll be getting some off study allowance and leaving uh, or going into casual um, in uh, my old job. So I'm living, totally living proof that uh, it, it works. And you've just got to change the way you work. Like I don't buy cereal anymore. Uh, I don't, uh, I'll, ha I'll have some eggs on toast, or like I said, I'll have something from the garden uh, on, on my sourdough breads. And luckily, um, you know, I'm not that poor, I can still afford to buy a decent sourdough bread, and because I won't eat that white stuff, it gives me rashes and all types of stuff. And uh, yeah, feedbacks uh, work too. So we're gonna drag some of these across again, and let's have a look at that. And we will just remove this for the moment and get me on full screen. Now it's not a bad image, but this other image So when I go across to the better image, I don't think you can hear me, I believe. So we'll work on uh, getting that one right uh, in the very, very, very near future. I've got to run some tests and things. But getting back to uh, the questions, feed bags work too. And you can see that one bag I've shown you, it's a very small, long way away, so it's hard to tell, but um, that's where they get their rice in. Uh, yeah, and feed bags are very similar. The only thing is some of those plastic bags, like that, they fall apart real quickly. They've got some type of nylon in them then the little pieces break off and I don't like them, those ones. So you'd have to get something that's a bit more uh, heavy duty. And those rice bags that they use over there are really good. The cheap like bags, you get your fertilizers and things in and that, man, within a year, little tiny pieces are falling in the stuff and microplastics. Um, so yeah, just be aware of what uh, you, you do use or dispose of it quickly uh, for that. And I think I hear a bit of rain outside. You're doing just fine, Marty. Technical glitches happen to everyone. Yeah, uh, you know, we're all challenged. We just keep moving through and uh, it's getting better all the time. And once I run those tests and get those other cameras working, just have a better visual. So we'll keep pulling across some questions here. Uh, if you've got something to say about bottle gardening or a question or something that you'd like to share, we're talking about different, maybe someone can go into Google and uh, I really were interested in what someone else can pull up about PK. So we've got our nitrogen, and our, you know, and our PK. So uh, we're getting too deep into that. Uh, I just want to talk about that. But like I said, if you've got a good compost and a worm cast, you're generally doing pretty good. And if you, and if you can add a seaweed mix to it, pretty much 99% of the way there. Plant life. <laughs> I know things, I sow things, I grow things. I like that. Okay, their plants look very healthy. Yeah, for sure. Like I said, it's growing in a good quality compost and it's still much better than like a lot of uh, the potting mixes and things that we get in our shops. 
and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, if you weren't at the live show yesterday, I mentioned that we've got a, a Facebook group now for Worm Wrangler members, so level one and up, and also those that are members at the Buy Me A Coffee page over there. And if you wanted to be a member of either, you can go through and um, I, you can, I'll pull across the other, the other page now. We'll reshare the other page and, um, and get that up and we'll give you a, a bit of a look at the Worm Wranglers page here. So yeah, you can become uh, a Worm Wrangler if you already are, and you, you, you like Facebook, you like using it, you're part of it, or you wanna go in there and uh, share photos and things like that, uh, become involved, ask, ask questions. As new members are c coming in who've been you know, quite um, adept in gardening and worm farming and all that type of stuff, uh, the input in here will be just gold over time. I believe it will really grow. We've got about eight members now um, as we speak. And I'm just going to turn this camera off because I'm not using it. It's wasting power on that. And uh, yes, yeah, so we've got eight, eight members as we speak, which is really great. And I'll just sort of, you know, I've been adding some little bit of content in here, just showing that uh, that video coming up. But I think that one didn't work anyway. Oh no, that's the other one from yesterday. And then I've got... Uh, it's just some comments and things in here and a welcome to uh, the new members. So that's it, the new Facebook group for Worm Wranglers and those who uh, come across from Facebook because we're going live into my Facebook page as well. They may want to go across to Marty's Gar um, Buy Me A Coffee slash Marty's Garden and you go in there and become a member there. It's $5 a month in there. And yeah, you can go from there. It's actually cheaper uh, through the group in the Worm Wranglers, which is about $3, I believe, AUD uh, for a Worm Wrangler one. But I recommend you do the Worm Wrangler uh, three, so you can do all the worm farming course courses, the intermediate, I mean, the beginning, the intermediates, it's a little bit of, not so much pro stuff, but there's a few things in there that extra, uh, some new ways to build worm farms and collect juice and things like that. And then also we've got the seedling section in the Worm Wrangler two, for raising seedlings and using your worm cast and your juice and stuff to grow uh, and create amazing healthy seedlings. Give them the best start. Yeah, they get the best life uh, for sure. All right, so that's that for that. And I just wanted to share that and let you know. And we'll keep going through uh, the questions here. Imagine what a cafe would have charged you for that sandwich. I know, mate. And uh, honestly, a cafe couldn't make it because it's harvested either that day or the day before, right? So, um, and it's probably not organic, it's probably been sprayed, all different types of things, grown differently, harvested early, all those things. So I just, you know, pretty hard. But when I was delivering to the restaurants, I used to harvest in the morning and sell that day, and they'd have it out over the next two or three days on their, pay, on their, in their food. So uh, that was one of the reasons why I was so popular. I find my worm tea is grow fruit on, on my cherry tomatoes. Before I had worm farms, all I had was flowers. Okay, so it's probably what you're putting, the inputs that you're putting in. So as I was saying before, if you're just using good compost, you'll get both. You'll get the growth from the all the MPK, plus all different minerals and things like that. It all depends what you're putting into your worm farm. So, but generally overall, it's higher nitrogen than the other one. But if you're putting in a lot of bananas, you know, you're getting potassium, things like that. So. Yeah, think about what you're feeding uh, your worms and then, yeah, it will work. Wonderful. DC, I joined all, I saw that. Thank you so much. It's a really big help. Um, as I said, we, um, I'm not working at school anymore and we're just relying on uh, YouTube income. <laughs> and so uh, it's not much, but we're scaling up here. I'm bringing out this content pretty much every day. Tomorrow we're not... The weekend I won't be here. I'll be here all next week as well, if all goes well. And then we'll be looking at, um, I'll let you know because I've got one day, I've got to go into TAFE, I think on the second. Uh, but that's still, oh, we've still got a bit of time. So yeah, we'll keep rolling it out. And if you're enjoying uh, these daily live shows and you're getting a lot of value from them, um, please let me know in the comments box down below. Oh, that new people that are coming in and looking too. I'm going, hey, what's going on here? Because we get a lot of first timers rolling in. Stu Taylor, the thing holding me back from worm farming is that I have nowhere to put the farm that's out of the sun. Can you get sunglasses or singlets for worms? 
yeah, that's a tricky one, but you could build an umbrella. You know, they get, I see people walking around the streets these days. Uh, a lot of Asians do it. I saw it when I was living in Asia as well, walking around with umbrellas to keep the sun off them. Uh, you could put it on a stand and then whack an umbrella at the top and you, know, you pick them up for five bucks or something like that. Food for thought, maybe. Um, yeah, or you can get the smaller worm farms. They're really nice looking and they go under the shelves, but they're not as practical. They don't, I don't believe they don't work as good. But um, you know, the other thing you can do, Stu, is I haven't done this, but you can do uh, bakashi. So I think it's a type of fermenting. Um, you can do that inside under your shelf and things like that. So there, you know, there are other ways to do it. And there's also fermentation. So like Korean natural farming, you can make uh, different implements and things that way. So there's other ways to do it other than if you just can't worm farm. Um, and, you know, I'm all about growing food the best way you can, fresh, organically and you know improving our our life around us and also uh improving the health life of all the plants and animals around us well the biodiversity when we get that biodiversity right um our health gets better our plants get better and all that mine are behind the choco vine keeps them cool hey that's a cool idea cool keep them cool i like that uh thanks for sharing that as i said before um, a lot of the time, you know, one of the reasons I love coming in here is not just connecting with you guys, I learn heaps as well. And people pull up these great concepts and share these really cool things that they're doing. And um, it's just, it's gold, you just, it's priceless really. Like if I'm creating a video from my backyard, which I like doing as well, um, I just don't get these things. Unless some people might put the comments down below underneath the video, I might miss it, or we don't get interact about it. Some will pull up a really good comment like um, like this one, and then we get to talk about it. So maybe are you putting yours under sun? I mentioned you could put an umbrella underneath so you get like a stand and then hook the umbrella onto it and you have a couple of feet between the umbrella and the side, turn it towards the sun, maybe, you know, depending on how hot it is outside, obviously and uh, under the choco vine. Maybe you could do it under a grapevine, um, you know, grow some like a, 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 a teepee, like how I had my underground one years ago, I grew a teepee like that with cherry tomatoes, and then I put an underground worm farm underneath, and then that, the, the ground keeps a more sustainable long-term temperature. And uh, I do have videos about underground worm farming on my channel, and also on the Worm Wranglers members area, we build a real big one out of uh, half a, half a barrel that came from an old composting bin and it's got a screw on lid and everything it's great and we show how we build the compost and put the worms in and how it fertilizes the garden excuse me really really cool so there are ways to hide them uh there so let's see what we've got here from deb remember to put a cue before your question yes please big cue really helps and if we remember that and we're coming back to the live shows each time it just becomes more habitual and uh, yeah, and easier to do. Uh, let's keep moving through here and we will hide that one. All right, so it's been some good tests here today. And what I'm gonna do again is I'm just gonna just do another really quick test again um, and see if you can hear this camera. So let me know. All I want is a no or a yes. And while I'm waiting for it, I'm just gonna do the fingers like this for five seconds. Let's go. Oh, I turned it off anyway. Remember I shut it down? Bugger. <laughs> I'm gonna have to run the test <laughs> at home some, some other way. We'll get it sorted. There we go, Stu again. Let's get this across. Thanks, Marty, it's a work in progress. My garden is classified as a science experiment. Oh, they all are, mate. <laughs> and the composting, the composing with, I think, composting with farming is then the next thing to consider. Yeah, as I always mention on my shows, my videos, things like that, we just need, if we build out too fast, we fail. So we just build out slowly and expand out as we go. And then eventually we get to a stage, we're going, it's too big, I can't manage any more of it, I'm gonna stop. Or we go, it's, it's, I think I can manage a little bit more until we add a little bit more. And as we do that, we're actually more productive. We actually get more out of, more out of our gardens 
because we're focused on those little spaces and getting a lot out of them. And then we build out like that and we get a lot more overall. Then going out big and building a whole lot if you're on your own, different you've got a family and friends and different coming in and helping, you can expand out more quickly and become more efficient. But when you're just on your own, build out slowly. Even sometimes when you do it with other people because you never know, they might let you down and not come back, right? <laughs> Let's keep going. G'day Pinball, good to see you mate. I probably have to build a structure to provide shelter. I think that's a good idea, um, you know, good idea. Uh, I, I got a message this morning from one of the crew here uh, saying, yeah, and showed me some photos a while back of some cucumbers and said, thank you so much, I've never grown anything in my life. Look at these cucumbers, it's very, very cool. And uh, now we've got the Worm Wranglers members area in, in Facebook. We're not moving out of YouTube, we're staying in YouTube, but we're gonna have the members over there in Facebook. And there's some links down below uh, if you wanna get across, share photos, ask questions, connect with other members, and uh, take you sort of gardening to uh, another another level again, I believe. And it's on a test pilot at the moment. We're just running to see how it goes. We've got eight members. We, the goal is to reach to 100. Um, so I haven't created a time limit for that yet. But yeah, we need to reach to 100 to make it because it's very, very cheap on a monthly rate for the value that you get and less than a coffee each month basically. You know, you've only got to grow a couple of cucumbers and some and a bag of tomatoes. Well, you know, a little bit I think it's five it's more than five dollars now I think for one of those little cherry tomato things, right? I've seen it's like eighteen dollars a kilo for those different coloured cherry tomatoes. And I think six dollars was the cheapest one I saw in Woolies the other day. And then it was about 14 something like that anyway let me know what are the prices they're charging for where you live for tomatoes i'd love to know that one uh, that would be really cool let's get going here and those cucumbers taste so much better than store-bought they do i don't like store-bought compute uh, cucumber i never buy them they've got no flavor but the ones that i've been growing that i'm putting on toast in the morning um like i said i used my homemade pesto yesterday um but i normally just put olive oil on the toast and then those put olive oil over it and salt and pepper and just just brilliant just tastes so good and so nutritious for you you know i think even i don't think i even need skincare do i <laughs> just kidding <laughs> bit of fun uh hey, look if you got any more questions uh, i'd love to hear what you think about um the bottle gardening stuff if you're coming in later um you know we've had a few hiccups with getting these things running and stuff like that uh with sound and stuff but we uh after about the first 30 seconds, we figured it out pretty quickly. And I scrolled through uh, a website called Desertification that shows bottle gardening. And the reason why it's called Desertification is because it was, it was brought up around that time when a lot of these farms, uh, they'd been tilling too hard, they'd been destroying the soils, and the soils were becoming hydrophobic and they become desertified. And uh, that was a part of Willem Bader Cottom's uh, job was to help solve those problems. but. They are absolutely massive. And then I think he stumbled across, now I can't say this for sure because he never told me this, but I'm pretty sure during his traveling times, he stumbled across that problem and gone, hey, I can just grow food this way and teach people how to do it. So it's like, instead of catching a fish for someone, teach someone how to fish and then they can catch their own, if that makes any sense. Okay, every, Deborah, you're not wrong. Everything tastes better from the backyard garden. Yeah, it is a bank yard garden. It's our own little food bank, that's for sure. Stew, absolutely tomatoes. I had first time, it was so yummy. And yeah, we grow our own food at home. Uh, it's, it's much more nutrient dense. And there's a, a thing about food, uh, which is, you know, which we like to call um, the life force in the food, so the nutrient density. As soon as we pick something, it starts instantly starting to break down, so it loses its nutrient density. Some people like to call it a life force. And uh, the sooner that we consume it and eat it, um, the better it is. And the longer we can grow it before we harvest it, so it gets a lot of the colors and goes to and ripens up. We also get more of the good sugars and things uh, in there. And uh, g'day Terry, good to see you here, mate. Uh, always great to see you, my friend, long-term watcher of the Marty's Garden Show. And here we go, jolly auto incorrect. Everything tastes better from the backyard. I actually like that in the backyard garden. <laughs> I'm going to use that. <laughs> I think that's really cool. Um, yeah, and uh, Terry, yeah, good, good to see you there, mate. And you know, 
I'm really enjoying being here in this community each and every day. We've been really, it's been a great way to connect. And uh, if you've been enjoying it too, please leave me, give me a thumbs up guys. It lets YouTube know that I'm more popular, I'm getting more popular, I'm giving value. I'm not saying I'm popular, I'm giving value and that you're enjoying it and staying around and it's helping you uh, to connect. So the longer you watch my videos for, um, the better my overall channel um, will, will work. And the more you return often to watch videos, uh, the better my channel. Like it sets signals off to YouTube. Then, okay, well, if he's coming back, we'll give him, we'll show him another video. Oh, he's coming back when the next one comes out. Or we'll show him an older one, uh, things like that. So the longer you watch it, the more of them you watch. Um, and the longer you stay on these shows, uh, the better the better it performs. I'm not saying to do that, but it does just let you know how it does actually help the channel. Uh, let's pull this up again. Food banking. Well, I love the food banking. Um, I've got to have, have to blow my nose here. Sorry, guys. Oh, a part of going live uh, online, and it's quite warm in here today. Uh, we're getting a bit of, it feels like a summer day. I guess it is a way of banking, except food instead of money. Excellent. Look, Eddie, you know, really, in all reality, Money is all about what we think the value is. So if we can take something from an exchange of value, we get money. And you can take, um, you know, five cucumbers to someone and they might give you something else. You know, could be something you need to fix the motor, your bike or a part for your car, or they might give you some chicken eggs or something like that. It's all how we think about how we perceive the value of money. And obviously, and honestly, our trust value for money is going down um, because of inflation, so we're trusting money less and less. So people will start so maybe doing that type of bartering uh, coming up more into the future. And as um, you know, as we spend our, you know, 40, 50, 100, 200 dollars, whatever you spend on shopping, 300, uh, you're getting less and less uh, every time for it. So, and as I said, because uh, I don't work much, I don't work at the school job over the holidays, my garden is keeping me alive. We cook 50% of our. Uh, our food last night. I had a friend come over even and created a meal for her in the garden. Nice big salad and then a nice big pesto pasta mix. And um, you know, I was able to get like fresh basil and chop, not, not fresh basil, well, fresh basil for the pesto, but into the uh, pasta salad uh, when I'm cooking it up at the end. I'm just chopping in parsley, the stems and the leaves in there, frying it through the garlic and the onion, and then throwing in the pasta, which is already pre cooked and then putting in the pesto sauce at the end, where it's been, you know, all the basil's come out of the garden. And then the salad, uh, you know, the cucumbers, um, we've got little, wild, got little wild cherry tomatoes, and they're going into the pasta mix and cooked in, removing some of the seeds. So, you know, uh, getting a lot of value um, out of that food. And so, yes, food is another way of banking <laughs> and uh, becoming more uh, self-sufficient. And that's why I brought up the bottle gardening today, it's one of the cheapest ways that we can grow food. If we make sure we use the good food grade bottles and then we replace them regularly, we're composting, filling it full of compost, we can save our own seed, things like that, and uh, really actually produce uh, a garden very, very quickly, especially if you're using the ABC method that I teach. So A for the microgreens, B for the baby leaf, and then C for the mature. So say example, we're growing um, some microgreens, uh, spring onions, right? Spring onions or shallots or something like that. So we're harvesting them when they're about that big, spring them on our little salad. We pull some aside out of that mix and then let them grow to about yay big until they're like, you know, half mature and we can half some of those. And then we keep some at the end, plant them into something else and grow them into a mature and we create this loop cycle and we always have food. A little bit of microgreens, a little bit of baby, a little bit of mature stuff and we're only growing sort of planting the seed once. And that's a really fast way uh, to do it. And we could do it in those uh, containers, uh, no problem. No problem at all. All right. Let's keep pulling some of the comments across here. I've got a bit of, excuse me. Oh. I need a drink of water. Oh, don't like doing that on live. But when we're running like this and no guests and I'm just consistently talking, my sinus gets me. I get a bit of sinus. Okay, home gardening stops food miles. And yes, it does. There's so many good points to it. And you know, I felt really sorry for Willem many years ago when 
you know, people were really wealthy, right, in the Western society. And he was going out and sharing this with people that weren't wealthy, that were really struggling. And they would attack him about, oh, you shouldn't grow in this. It's no good growing that. It's poisonous. It's toxic. And you go, hang on. These people can't even afford food. If they can grow in that and grow their own food and feed themselves, and actually it's actually less toxic than the food that they buy from the market because it's got no chemicals and nasty sprays on it. In certain countries, they have less uh, strict restrictions on these sprays and things like that. So they're actually getting a better quality, high-end food. And they're harvesting it with no shelf life. They're just getting it and eating it. And they're con connecting via community. So, you know, they're growing it together. Families growing it together. They're bringing it out on a plate. They're eating it. And, get, and then family and friends are coming around. They're sharing so many values to it. And as food miles is just one amazing point, right? So anyway, that's my rant. Um, and that's why I'm sticking with it, with the bottle gardening stuff. Terry, great point. The size of the earthworms under my under my and my bales are huge. Once they start moving up into that system, mate, uh, they are massive. I think I may have missed something, so I'm just gonna come back here. And this is what Deborah B says. That's my goal, at least 50% from my backyard. I think it's a good goal. Um, go for 30% first, then you'll find that the 50% will come quite quickly uh, because you'll learn how to change your recipes and things like that you'll learn how to make what you've got out of there and then you know you might start preserving and doing different things and then all of a sudden you're going hey i'm not growing any more but i'm getting more because i'm you're learning understand how to cook a bit of recipes and preserve and stuff so think about those lines and then you might add a couple more plants like you put some fruit trees in like i have some nut trees and things in a couple of years they're producing and then you know you, you, you you're floating on that 50 and above sort of thing depending on how much space you've got and what you eat but if you eat a lot of salads in uh, the right season for growing it you can easily do 50 percent uh, on your plates uh, little salads and um, some some veggies uh, let's keep going hopefully I haven't missed anything watching all your tour videos helped me so much with my garden it's doing so well now I have worm farms and everywhere I look in the garden find more worms that's awesome Terry you've been doing it for quite a while now um, so you're a really good testimony I think you bought my ebook when it first came out uh, a few years ago uh, from memory and you actually were one of the first people to um, when we had the the videos in the website and it was much more expensive to access them in those days uh, one of the first people to do that and you, you like the ebook I remember you said more than the videos some people like to read some people like to um, to learn and you know so there's links and descriptions on how to get access to those contents and the ebook is available on the website the older ones the same one it's just not updated and then in um, Amazon's the new updated version just with some new images and, but it's basically the same content just a bit of an upgrade and we'll keep moving through here and come on show me show me there we go we've managed to have meals but the only thing in the plate what we didn't grow was the meat. So satisfying. It is satisfying. And once you get there, uh, man, there's no looking back, right? Um, it's a pretty much the same for me. Some days, though, if I get eggs and I just had the only thing will be toast. That's it. Maybe if we use a butter or an olive oil or something on the toast, salt and pepper. The rest is um, from the garden. I really enjoy that when we're doing like these egg, egg and salad and bit of veg meals. Uh, yeah, really cool. So hopefully I'm not missing anything here. Uh, I'm going to move this camera away. It's blocking uh, the point here. And I think we're up to here now. Yeah, I bought supermarket pears for Q salad. Absolutely no flavor. Tommy's, we bought two large one days, one day for picnic, and but no flavor. Tough skins. Next time taking my own Brad and Tommy's for sure. Uh, yeah, the, the tomatoes have grown thick skin, so they stack in boxes. Um, so yeah, so they're better, and they don't, and they pack better and stuff like that. They're bred that way uh, for the supermarket, and so you know we get our own heirloom varieties, much thinner skins, better flavors. They sit on the on the on the vine much longer and pick up uh, all those good sugars that we like to taste. Marty, what are your thoughts on tumbleworm buffet ground worm farm? I think it's a bit small uh, myself. I had one, don't even know where it is now. Might be under the house or something, or it might have gave it away. 
probably, I think I gave it away. Um, yeah, if that's all you got, but I just think they're a bit small. I think you can do, they're much better options uh, for, for them. They're too, they like a narrow, like a cone sort of thing. And uh, I like just using like a, a, you know, the 10 gallon bucket, drilling a lot of holes around the bottom and around the side. And then a few around near the top, just to allow airflow. And then you've got the screw on lid, a couple of holes in the top and bury them down about two thirds of the way and grow all your plants around the outside and create a bit of a teepee if it's in the sun with tomatoes or cucumbers or whatever. And then you just come in from one side and um, unscrew the lid and, and do it that way. So uh, I think they're okay. If you've got one, yeah. Uh, I just think they're a bit small. Okay, let's keep moving through. I have four, and when I feed the farms, I only see 10 small ones. I'm thinking the rest are in the right. I sorry, I don't really understand that, sorry. Uh, maybe be a bit more clearer, uh, and I can answer it. Or maybe you're talking to someone else. Remember, if you've got a question, just put a big Q there, and um, I can then answer that question. If not, I just scroll through and find little things. A lot of, sometimes you guys are just chatting together, and uh, that's really cool too. Marty, have you considered, so a Q, please <laughs> put a Q if you can remember. Marty, have you considered aquaponics for a protein source like tilapia plus fantastic nutrient water for the garden? I have. Um, the aquaponic systems, I really like them. It's a little bit more in balance. I haven't done one, but I've looked at them quite a, and had friends that done them. And, you know, it's just getting that water right. So some fish can handle chuck fluctuations of water change better than others. Others can't. And so depending on the type, but tilapia is a fish that really uh, strong apparently it's okay eating uh, can handle fluctuation in pH and temperature uh, so it's a really good one I've seen them in uh, Philippines just growing in big tanks not even in aquaponic systems and selling them out of the tanks like that um, and I think it, we don't can't use tilapia in Australia it's an illegal fish so if I could get tilapia I would but the um, the fish here that we can use in Australia, uh, they're very temperamental to certain things. And, um, you know, you could use goldfish, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I think it'd be a really good idea. And I would love to do something that for a protein source uh, into the future. I had one offered to me to buy a little while ago, uh, an IBC, uh, but I, I didn't get to use it. I didn't get to purchase it, sorry. I use IVS water tanks, beats it cheap as chips. Cool. Uh, yeah, IB, yeah, IBC, yeah, yeah. That's what I mentioned uh, a little bit. Uh, the buckets, as Marty described, and it worked well, W, V, N, W. If you forget to feed them for a long time, they always come back when I feed them again. Oh, cool, Terry, that's great. Like I said, you've been doing this for a long time and um, using my methods. And as you said before, um, you've grown a lot of food now and you're consistently growing food and um, you've used the composting, worm farming and um, you know, developing uh, the, the uh, you know, a natural system around you to build up the biodiversity and stuff to protect from pests and things like that. So that's been really good. And congratulations uh, for that, uh, Terry, and for your long going, ongoing support now. Deb, Deborah B, our um, our moderator in the back said, Q, 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 lol. People forget, people come in late, come in late or whatever. But it's just a matter of just, we just build up the habits over time. If you can remember to put a Q in front of the question. We've been running for about 50 minutes now. We did come on uh, a little bit late uh, because of some hiccups. And then we had a little hiccup at the beginning. But I feel that um, things are going fairly well here. And we're having a good old chat, bringing some questions across. And remember, if you, anyone would like to uh, get any extra value, please give us a thumbs up. And uh, the super chat option uh, is there at the bottom of the chat box inside YouTube. And every little, every tiny little bit of super chat just helps add up uh, to keep this channel uh, running. And if you can also become a Worm Wrangler member or a Buy Me a Coffee over at Buy Me a Coffee page or become a Buy Me a Coffee member, you can also then access our Facebook group, the Worm Wrangler group, uh, if you're a member in either of those, and take your gardening to uh, another level uh, yet again. So let's uh, bring it up here. Oh, I just mentioned, I just said that one. All right, so no more questions coming across. We'll just leave for a couple of minutes there. 
let you know what I'm doing here. Now it's getting hotter. I'm looking at maybe growing some extra chilies. Um, so I've got some special Thai ones that uh, have been mentioned to me. They're called I think, Khans or something like that. Oh, this lady from Thailand got in touch with me and said, would you grow these for me? Um, she lives up uh, Gold Coast way. Shri, her name is, if you're watching Shri, hats off to you, I haven't forgotten you. And um, yeah, I'll get those started now, it's getting hotter. Um, I've got some Thai papaya, dwarf papaya, three of them come up with some more seed and they only grow to about, about six foot is I think the maximum height. And that's perfect from keeping them away from bats. I've got about another 10 of the, just the normal reds coming up. I've planted uh, a macadamia tree, a kaffir lime, and a lemon myrtle up in the back corner. Um, we've got some wild, more wild, well not wild tomatoes, but I was throwing the tomatoes out the chickens. We've been staking those up. Down the side of the fence, some of the Australian uh, flowering plants and shrubs and things are starting to grow, like the lily pillies and stuff like that. And they'll start bringing in more insects. We're noticing more little lizards, skinks. Um, the frogs are starting to turn up more often. Uh, more different types of birds are turning up now. And so really starting to build some habitat. And uh, I think within by next year, once sort of like that up the side of the fence where that permaculture windrow um, is happening and like there's food and stuff in there and different flowering plants, we'll get more bees, uh, more, more of the Australian native bees coming in, there'll be more insects breeding up there, good and bad ones so they can predate, hunt and feed on each other and things like that. So pretty happy uh, with the way things are going here. But the main thing I'm focused on growing now, going into the hot, hottest part of summer, will be um, there's some different chilies, probably put some more capsicums in, and uh, gonna be growing a thing called uh, Egyptian spinach. Hopefully that will come up, it's a nice big, wide plant looks like a giant marigold i guess in a way you can use the leaves for cooking for that i think you can cook with the bulbs as well it's related to okra really handles the heat i'm going to try and get some amaranth maybe too late for that but that's a three month plant so we could get that around and then just keep work like taking care of what i've got here now and looking what else we can put into uh, the raised garden beds or i'll just start filling them up and getting them ready for autumn to go hard with bok choy lettuce um, some more cucumbers, it's getting a little bit hot for cucumbers. Things like that, setting up some stake systems and stuff and uh, setting that up. And then once it's cooled down a bit, we'll start putting in the in-ground uh, worm farms. And uh, here's a go, yes. Very hot yesterday in Brisbane. Q, you just answered what good to plant now. Yes, so um, that's one reason why we brought that up. And if you're in like um, any part of Australia now, it's getting very warm and uh, they're really good ones to have. And remember, um, I'm also, yeah, I didn't mention tomatoes. So different type of tomatoes. Uh, you can grow the uh, indeterminates now right through until uh, it gets cold. And then as we're in another month or so, we want to start planting the determinants. Well, you could do both if you want to do both together. I'm doing both. But you can plant the determinants towards the end and they'll go through to that end of the cycle and you'll get uh, more plants. So look at planting different color, colored cherry tomatoes. Tomatoes, I've got yellows, I've got medium sized ones that are black color, purple color, all those type of things. And you get, remember you get different nutrition densities out of different colored foods. So think about growing the rainbow guys, all different colors from your fruit and uh, consider growing, you know, like the purple colored microgreens, like the red, purple sango radish, things like that. And you'll be surprised that you go out and you just harvest a little bit of kangkong, a little bit of purple sango radish, you've got a cucumber, a tomato, you might have some, you might even do some alfalfa or something like that, or you buy some alfalfa, mix it together on the side of your plate, with like the other guy said, meat from the you're buying, if you like that type of thing, I, I like eating my meat, and uh, yeah, and then you've got uh, amazing food. And if you've got lucky like me, and you've got some chickens, and you can put up with them being really annoying, <laughs> then uh, yeah, you can have eggs and salad and all you're doing is a bit of buying a bit of toast. Who knows, you might even bake your own bread, but uh, interesting to see. And we've got one here. What about trout if you keep the water cool though? Yeah, look, um, if you're further down south, um, trout would work better like in places like Tasmania, things like that, where I am subtropics, you go more for like barramundi, those type of things. It's easier to keep the water warm than to keep it cool. But um, you know, they, you can also do like uh, perch and bass and stuff. But they, you've got to buy the fingerlings. You can't breed them on, and so you've got to buy the fingerlings, put them in. 
So it's something that I, I might consider um, going uh, into the into the future. Rick said he's heading off now. See you, mate. We're just about to finish up anyway. Uh, we've had a great Q and A today, and thank you so much again for your patience on the issues that we've had. And as we're moving through, I'm learning and getting better slowly at this. I want to find out why that microphone is not working. That was just absolutely crazy. But I think the image coming out of this isn't too bad. Uh, it's pretty nice. And um, we've answered a lot of things today and covered a lot of stuff. And remember, you can bottle garden. It's a cheap way to do it. You may just want to have four or five of them. You just might want to do a two, two or three. You might just want to grow some certain plants in them because you don't want to go out and buy containers and things like that. Just remember, use good quality food grade stuff. And uh, you can grow in a lot of different recycled things. I've even seen stuff growing in shoes, believe it or not. And I'm sure you have too. So think outside of the box, guys. And uh, yeah, get creative. And I'd like to hear. And if you're doing anything like that, please share it if you're a Worm Wrangler member in the members area in Facebook. I'd love to see those images, what you're doing, what you're sharing, and how you're moving forward uh, with your garden. So um, thank you, Stu. Uh, we try and get as much value out as we can, and uh, I am a qualified horticulturist, and um, I love my organics and my permaculture, and cover a lot of stuff uh, like this along the lines, and producing a lot of videos, little short, quick ones, longer ones, rehash ones from old days, and um, ideas and concepts that I'm discovering online. I will be sharing it here. All right, so we are gonna finish up now. What I want you to do, guys, is say goodbye to each other in the chat. This is really important. I'm gonna put some tunes on. Now, this is not my music that I prefer, but it's just what the software um, from Restream provide me. So we're gonna put that on now, and uh, we will. you can say goodbye, we'll play some tunes, and I'll give you a wave and say goodbye along the way. So let's go, let's get some music going. And we've got the lo-fi, here we go. Definitely not lo-fi. I like the more the disco-y version stuff. <laughs> Remember, say goodbye to each other there in the, in the chat box, guys. I'll pull them across, and uh, we'll just get this music just changed quickly. Chill. There we go. I reckon that's chill, but there we go. Thanks, Deb. Thanks, Terry, mate. Good to see you. See you, Ellen. Keep saying goodbye to each other in the chat, guys. Send them across. And I'll see you at the next live show Monday. Monday, we're going to be back on 9.30 Sydney, New South Wales time. And keep an eye out for other videos. We've got a few stored in the back end. They'll be coming out over the next couple of days over the weekend. Thank you, Deb, for your wonderful help. Thank you. Oh, let's hit that one. chill music thanks everyone for coming to watch the show love you all appreciate you all so grateful for everything helping marty's garden stay alive you come and watch my content you share my videos you get involved in here and you get lots of value i get lots of value and it's just the best place to be thank you so much we'll see you at the next live show monday got a few rolling out videos on the weekend bye for now